Hi guys, so it was Kemi Badenoch's debut at PMQs and it was just as bad as I had expected. So she began by attacking the government and the Labour Party over its support for Kamala Harris, which was a pretty weak line. Then she attacked David Lammy, the Foreign Secretary, who used some spicy language regarding Donald Trump in the past. Notice that we are not allowed to talk bad about Donald Trump, but he can say whatever the hell he wants. Now the new Tory leader stuck to her script, which was probably to focus only on Donald Trump, but Starmer was better prepared. The problem of a script also came up, which was pretty embarrassing for Badenoch. Have a listen. Mr. Speaker, he will not make that commitment. That is very clear. All that he is doing... All... I'm going to hear the questions. If the people who don't want to hear it, they can leave now. Come on. Mr. Speaker, he will not make that commitment, and yet the world is getting more dangerous. His Chancellor's budget did not even mention defence. The Chancellor's budget last week was a copy and paste of Bidenomics. It turns out that a high spending, high borrowing, high inflation approach is less popular than she may have thought. May I suggest he now urge her to change course, or is he determined to be a one-term leader? Prime Minister. Uh, the one thing I learned as leader of the opposition is a good idea to listen to what the government is actually saying. I think she just said that defence wasn't mentioned in the budget. It was seven days ago that it was absolutely clear and central to the budget, as was economic growth. We are fixing the foundations. We're giving a pay rise to millions of people. We're picking up the mess that they left, £22 billion, and a tax rate and a pay rise for working people. And I haven't heard yet her welcome that pay rise for the three million lowest paid workers. Does she now welcome it to stick to her previous policy that it's excessive? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. 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 Speaker, I was the one who raised the minimum wage last year as business secretary. I have a strong record on this, but we need to make sure that we balance the books. His scripted lines are showing that he has not even listened to the budget himself. So I will try a different question. Perhaps he can give something that is unscripted to the people watching. Farmers across the United Kingdom... Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Uh, order! Uh, I don't need any help. Can I just say, if somebody wants to leave, I'll be helping them do that. I'm going to hear the question, and I certainly want to hear the answer as well. So please, let's have some courtesy. Mr Speaker, we have heard him repeat the lines on the television, fixing the foundations and so on. But what does he say, over and over again, but what does he say to farmers who are facing uncertainty about their futures as a result of the increased taxes announced by the Chancellor? I am very clear that we would reverse Labour's cruel family farms tax. What can he say now to reassure the farming community? who provides security for the whole nation. Prime Minister. I'm, I'm happy to help the leader. Of the if she's going to complain about scripted answers, it's probably best not to read that from a script. <laughs> you know, see, the problem here is it's all theatre. You have to be able to do the theatre. And Kemi Badenoch is not, not very good at the theatre. She has to follow a script. Like, a script can be there to help you. Notes can be there to help you. But if you're asking questions, you should actually know these questions in your head. You notice that, for example, Stephen Flynn from the SNP stands up and he asks a question. He doesn't, he's not reading from notes. He's not looking down. It means that he has it in his head. See, it's okay for the Prime Minister to respond because the Prime Minister receives the questions beforehand and has to respond to maybe a question about uh, data or has to respond in some particular way. So they have to be making sure that they're presenting the right answer. Now, of course, most of the time the government don't answer the question. But if they are talking about something in particular, it's okay for them to look down and say, okay, this is what we're going to do or this is what we have done. But if you're asking the question, you should have it in your head. You shouldn't be reading it. Maybe glance down once in a while at the notes. See, this is why I think she's not going to last very long. She's not used to this. She's not good at this. So when she was in government, 
she would constantly be reading from notes, reading from a script. And that's okay in a sense, because you're being asked a question and you have to provide an answer. But if you're asking the questions, you're expected to know what the questions are. She probably doesn't create the questions herself. She probably doesn't even read the questions before PMQs. It's prepared for her, and then she reads the question. But by doing that, you're not looking, you're not engaging, and you're not able to respond on the fly. See, Boris Johnson was actually quite good at this. He wasn't in opposition, but he was, he was good at uh, responding to things on the fly. He was able to listen to a response and attack that response. Even Rishi Sunak wasn't too bad at this. But Kemi Badenoch is absolutely pathetic. Now, maybe I'm being overly cynical. This is at the very beginning. But she needs to improve her game. Once again, this is all about theatre. I hate the theatre. It should be a case of you ask a question and you receive a response. But PMQs is not like that. And, you know, she's getting her behind handed to her here by the government. She's supposed to be on the attack. The government is supposed to be on the defence. But... You know, in just a few short uh, moments here, Keir Starmer really won this. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.